All right, let's All right. podcast. Hello, friends and fiends. Welcome to Bugs Need Heroes, a podcast where an artist and entomologist team up to illustrate the inspiring abilities of insects by creating a bug themed hero. I'm Amanda. And I'm Kelly. That was very fast, Amanda. <laughs> Uh, well, I'm a very fast kind of girl. Before we get started creating this bug themed hero, what's bugging you, Kelly? Oh, I've had I've had quite the week. Um, oh my goodness, you have. You I've, really have. I've, I have good news and bad news. Um uh, good, good news, news is, is we just bought a new car, which is awesome. Woo! Yeah. yeah. So we have a new um Subaru Crosstrek. And I feel like now I have to move mm-hmm. to Portland yes, to hang come out. Join me. With come you and to Derek. live my Subaru life. <laughs> And then the, Get a dog named Shasta. Oh, I like Just it. Live in the mountains. <laughs> Return to your feral child roots. <laughs> oh man. Um. Oh, then the the bad news is I had a dental implant put in where a molar used to be, um, mm. because that that tooth had a root canal and it cracked and and then an infection oh, happened. Sounds so, like a juicy time. It was not great. <laughs> uh, the infection ate away so much of my bone that they had to use a bone graft and they took that bone graft from a different part of my jaw and oh my goodness oh, it was oh painful my gosh. that sounds straight up horrible it was, it was awful ah. and it still hurts but, it's gonna hurt for a hot minute kelly I'm yeah. <laughs> are you okay at the dentist or does the dentist freak you out no, it doesn't bother me. Uh, yeah. I don't like I don't like the big needle. I feel like that mm. giant needle looks like it comes straight out of the 1600s, and we've Correct. never changed it. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when it's coming right at your face, you know, like it's the so uh, the forced perspective on that. You're like, why are you trying to put that pencil in my gums? <laughs> yeah, I feel like the tip of it is pencil sized. Yeah. It is yeah, so it feels painful. Very large. Uh, my husband is he doesn't use these words. He is terrified of the dentist because of their use of needles. Mm. Uh, he's not a needle boy. My, my, Me neither. my son gets freaked out by needles and then he always gets the shot and he always goes, that was nothing, mom. I feel fine. And I'm like, yeah, you work <laughs> into a froth over what I view as nothing. I don't remember being scared of needles as a kid, but my husband is still has the big needle phobia. We try to take him to the dentist. It must have been exactly pre-pandemic it must have been like february of 2020 Mm. went to the dentist he needed to get just a cavity filled like nothing even intense but you you still have to numb it we had to make a special appointment we had to go in knowing that he was gonna get a needle and he still couldn't do it Aww. I tried to tell him. He was like, well, you have two options. You can get numbed up at the site or we can put you under. But he didn't want to get put under. He doesn't like to use excessive drugs. And that sometimes like falls in the realm of I don't like to use anything. So he, like, I have the same thing. I barely yeah, take yeah. Tylenol or aspirin. Exactly. He doesn't <laughs> like to take even, you know, an Excedrin migraine is like a little intense for him, you know. Uh, so he was like, I can do it. Just give me like the laughing gas we're going to be fine. We're going to be fine. So like, it was like this hour long ordeal where he kept saying, I'm going to be fine. Do it. I'm going to be fine. Do it. And then they'd come at him with that pencil sized needle and he, like his jaw would clamp and he'd start to like shake. And like, he just, he just couldn't do it. I get the shakes too. I get Mm -hmm. it. My, your body. And I told the surgeon, I go, I'm going to shake. And it's just my anxiety. I'm okay. I have no control over this yeah ex- exactly so cody you know. just couldn't do it so finally the dentist pulled me aside and was like we're gonna need to put him under and i was like yeah i told him that yesterday <laughs> <laughs> so we had to like come back the next day put him under the whole thing um he ended up just like loopy out of his mind just you know just like david after dentist levels of like doesn't know what's happening apparently he held my hand all through the surgery. Aww. This is not true. I was not there. <laughs> he held the dental assistant's hand. Who? I am a short, fat, white woman. And the dental assistant was a tall, black man. And he, but he just kept 
holding his hand and like <laughs> talking to him like he was me. Apparently, he was like, Amanda, I love you so much. Oh, this is scary. You know what I mean? And the guy was just like, Okay. Yep. Uh huh. <laughs> I was like, I had to like Aww. thank him for being a substitute. Video. So, it's the a, dentist. It's, it's a hell hard. Of a drug. It's hard when you have a phobia like that. And a little, I guess, a little content warning, or we can cut this part out. But they did uh-huh. take an actual hammer and chisel to uh. my jaw, uh. <laughs> and it was a horrible experience. Men, and this this have surgeon you goes in your mouth yet to check for like a tiny statue of David. <laughs> oh, a little artwork in there. <laughs> a little artwork. <laughs> Well, my surgeon told me, he says, this is going to be scary, and I'm sorry. But he was wonderful. Um, best surgeon I've ever had under horrible circumstances. I've heard there's a real difference between going to your dentist and going to an oral surgeon. That if yeah. you need to get something done, don't go to your dentist. Have them recommend an oral surgeon for you. Yeah. The dentist is not equipped to do a lot of these procedures. Right. Um, although I did get to see the bone when it came out of my mouth and that was awesome um i asked them if i could keep any that was left over but they used it all so i don't know they jigsawed it all back into place (laughs) i just saw this tiktok that was about this girl that has black bones whoa Uh, apparently there's some kind of common acne medication that has some ingredient in it that sucks up into your bones and turns them black that's kind of cool i hope it's not I hope it's not um, detrimental in any way, but it sounds. It didn't sound nice. like it was. It sounded like it, it gets absorbed into your body eventually mm-hmm. once you stop taking the medication, and it's fine. It just no. But like, I guess her tooth came in like after she, you know, because she's a teenager. She yeah. had her wisdom teeth come in, and the wisdom teeth were black, and she was like, oh, oh, <laughs> oh, "That would oh. freak me out." Yeah, right. And that's how she found out she has. I don't want a black tooth. Boats. <laughs> yeah, that's not good. <laughs> At least it's in the back of your mouth when it's the wisdom tooth. <laughs> But I'm so I'm still recovering, and it's why we couldn't record last weekend because I couldn't open my mouth. Um, I can just now open my mouth almost, I think, to the normal normal size, which is still pretty small. I have a small mouth. Um, <laughs> You're not just like a basking shark. Uh, no. <laughs> always the and funniest I'm, way. To and I'm starving because all I've had to eat is like mac and cheese and soup and oatmeal and ice cream. And none of those things are super nutritious. Long They're term. not super hearty. <laughs> you need some bone broth. I, some some black I did have some bone, bone broth. broth. <laughs> but I'm, I'm glad to be back. Um, but yeah, glad to be back with you guys. Glad to have a new car coming. So, uh, Did you spend any of your sick time watching the HBO smash hit, The Last of Us? Oh, did I? Ooh. Oh, it's so good. Did you cry during episode three? Oh, like a baby. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting there on the couch next to my husband and he's got his, you know, he's got his hand on my knee and we're, you know, we're watching and I can feel the tears coming and I'm it, thinking, oh coming. no, oh, coming. I don't want this. I don't want to cry watching a zombie movie or a zombie show. And then uh, I couldn't stop him. I didn't make, I'm not a loud crier. I don't make any noise. Mm-hmm. Mm-mm. But just you like don't silent, me loud anything, Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not you know, like. Excuse anything. me, I've broken my leg. Could someone please help me? <laughs> that is exactly what I would do. Excuse because excuse me, <laughs> I don't like attention. I hate. I hate like when attention is on me, which I know sounds weird because we're doing a, a podcast. Well, you're not the but, one um, in the eye here. Just yeah, me. I'm like hiding behind the screen. Uh, so even like if I'm injured, you'll never know. <laughs> I won't know. say anything. you're like a cat that way. Like by the yeah. time you've let someone know you're really hurt, it's too late. You're, it's too late. <laughs> but yeah, I just silently wept on the couch next to my husband, who just gently patted my hand. <laughs> yeah, that did. Did you cry? Um, I did, but caveat: I watched the episode in about three twenty-minute chunks, uh, mm. just because that's how my life is right now. <laughs> So the emotional impact was lessened because oh, yeah. I wasn't, I didn't watch it in the one go just because, you know, that's you, how it you is. You had kids and stuff. Yeah. I got kids and stuff. And every time one of them's awake, I feel like I can't watch Last of Us because it's a little bit scary. So I don't want them to see a fungus man coming at them. <laughs> so. Did you, so I, I know you don't like 
um scary things so how is how has this experience been for you i don't like scary things i'm sorry i'm so singing today um i don't like to use my spare time to do things that make me feel not good (laughs) which often means i don't really watch scary movies i don't really watch psychological thrillers even sometimes an action movie will make me feel bad enough that i'm like i regret watching this um i prefer to watch British people bake um, <laughs> a lot of British people making food. If I'm honest, that's a, that's a, that's a big soothing a genre. <laughs> it's very soothing. I watch a lot of survivor has been my big viewing item this year. Cause let's face it that no one's going to like get attacked by a zombie on survivor. <laughs> um, that's next season when they run out of idea. Finally <laughs> season 45, there's zombies on the Island. Jeff, no. Um, <laughs> but no, I don't really like to watch scary stuff. Last of Us is is okay because I I'm kind of aware of a lot of the the genre, what I'm likely to see, if that mm-hmm. makes sense. And you know, s- s- spoilers probably for this podcast. If you haven't watched Last of Us yet, one of us is going to slip and say something that's spoilery. Yeah, yeah. But the the zombies are less gory and more freaky. <laughs> Yeah, they're a little uncomfortable to look at. Um, And if you want to make sure where where you are for spoilers for this episode, um, it's only up to episode three because I did not get a chance to watch episode four last night. Correct. I also didn't watch four, which came out sometime earlier this week. I'll probably watch tonight with my husband. Yeah. Yeah. The weekend is my most likely time to watch things. So, (laughs) Uh, yeah. So, yeah, we're only on episode three. Three. So we've seen the zombie outbreak. We've seen the post-apocalyptic things are bad. And then we've seen episode three, but humans still have feelings. <laughs> and we're going to make you feel some. We're going to make you real upset with those feelings. Yeah. And so I believe next episode, again, I have not watched yet. Episode four is out, but we haven't watched it. Is more of the world build about like, here's what these guys are up to and humans still trying to human even though all the humans are bad you know (laughs) because because like last of us has a really interesting conceit in that they get to zombies in a different way and that's going to be our subject for today is how they get to the zombies a different way but once you get to the zombies i feel like the the tropes are still there like there's still a person who can't get infected yeah classic zombie trope that's always the thing right is there's a person who can't get infected and we got to get them to the scientists and then the real enemy in a post-apocalyptic wasteland is not the monsters it's the people that's the two major themes of every zombie franchise on the planet anyway the tropes of zombiedom are someone's gonna have immunity and the real enemy of humanity is other humanity yeah and those tropes i think are definitely in play in last of us so so i guess my point is i know what to expect in last of us (laughs) (laughs) yeah it's kind of uh i haven't played the video game so i don't know 100 percent what to expect but i i do feel like i can kind of see everything coming and i don't mind Mm -hmm. um yeah 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 i'm kind of used to that Certainly there, I, I'm not sitting here thinking like, and now episode three will be blah, blah, blah. But like, I can get a general, like, okay, it's likely that someone's going to get shot, get bit. There'll be scary guys that pop out of the dark. And I can like emotionally prepare myself for those three things. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm excited you're watching it with us, even though you're generally a little bit nervous about it. I am. I just, you know, I'm just kind of like an anxious baby at all times. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think the real thing is I, I'm a very visual person mm-hmm. and visuals tend to stay with me for a long time. And especially when my only free time is after the children have gone to sleep. And so I, I, I watching a zombie movie <laughs> right before bed, a not, the tough. Best. not the best. <laughs> so I'm just, and I'm also like, anytime I'm stressed, I'm very prone to nightmares. I get that from my dad. I don't know if Derek producer Derek has that too, but just stress dreams are like a very big reality of my experience. <laughs> and the last thing I need is like more fodder. Yay. Um, so I, I am watching it. And I am enjoying it. I did 
when I paused it, did want to get back to it. It wasn't like oh, it was a chore good. getting through it. Um, but that might also be just like the completionist in me. I like I like to have things. Yeah, I like to finish everything too, even finish if I didn't it. care for it. Right. I like I finish movies that I don't enjoy. When people are like, just turn it off and leave. I'm like, but I gotta know what happens. I gotta know I finish, if I'm right. I'm thinking this is horrible. I finish books that I don't enjoy. And sometimes yeah. that is a lot of hours. <laughs> That's a lot of hours. But I started that book and I have to finish it. It's just yeah. how it goes. So, um, but I am excited to talk about um, Pedro Pascal. Always. Yes. <laughs> Friend of the pod, Pedro Pascal. Pedro Pascal. <laughs> it's the second week in a row we've mentioned him to be fair. <laughs> well, between uh, our love of Star Wars and, yes, and now The Last of Us. Happen. Uh, I want him and Nathan Fillion to be in a movie together where they have to, they find out that they're, they find out they're half brothers at like their dad's <laughs> funeral and they have to I'm in. go, yeah, I'm they have to, like, go on an adventure to get like their dad's final wish is for them to get to know each other because they look alike. <laughs> Pedro Pascal looks like a Chilean Nathan Fillion. Nathan Fillion looks like a, I don't know, Irish Pedro Pascal. <laughs> yeah. I would watch that. I would I don't, watch. I don't and have like, enough Nathan Fillion in my life currently. I'm okay with them being estranged half brothers as well, because hmm. they and are they like in their have 50s. to pick up the pieces. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it would be hard to like keep your secret brother a secret for 50 <laughs> years, but uh, yeah. Well, I mean, I, yes, I'm always happy to t- to talk about Pedro Pascal, but and his I'm, love of protecting a small magical child. Yes, but I'm also excited today to talk about parasitic fungus. I am Bungie. not excited to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> so like like I said, I, I'm a little bit susceptible to like grossness. Mm-hmm. Fungus freaks me out. So, so last let, of let's us, start there. Uh, Why does what about fungi makes you uncomfortable? Um I think again, mostly it's the texture. There's something uh, nefarious about all the different textures the mushrooms come in uh i don't mind a spongy little red cap dude that's fine whatever that's just a mushroom but like it's a I don't cute know little fairy tale mushroom exactly right. make me grow big <laughs> make me shrink small <laughs> little mushroom but i don't like when they're spindly in any way that can oh, go away okay i don't like when they're slimy in any way that can go away and i especially don't like when they ooze that's <laughs> gross get it away from me <laughs> I, w- I wish we uh, i wish listeners could see the video for this because amanda's head <laughs> it's a lot of back it's and forth of, neck movements happening right now sassiness happening with this head uh yeah in particular the one that freaks me out the most i think i mentioned this last week to pet is that mushroom that like oozes red Mm -hmm. goo Mm -hmm. yeah get away from me (laughs) Ah, i do not want that uh yeah i i i don't know something about it you know some people get freaked out by spiders because they're just so different from us i think i have that with mushrooms with mushrooms fungus like slime mold which i don't know if that's technically a fungus not a fungus it used to be well slime mold used to be classified under kingdom uh, fungi but now it's now they're actually classified under uh, uh, amoebas so oh. slime molds are yeah. well amoebas also freak me out then <laughs> do not want <laughs> you know it's interesting i think about the last of us mushroom um people and, and the way the fungi sort of bloom i guess mm-hmm. on the on the people is it so varied? We see lots of different colors. I was, I was going to mention that it feels like the big... And fruiting body shape. So a mushroom yeah. is the fruiting body of a, of a fungus. Um, but if it's based off of cordyceps, which is a particular type of parasitic fungus... Which they name drop in the show. They say and they, Yeah, and they do, right? Um, they don't look like that. They no. are not that colorful. They're certainly not that large. Um, they don't produce mushrooms... They're yeah, because there's been that fungi. one, I think they called it a clicker in episode mm-hmm. two. They had like, its face was overgrown with, it, reminiscent of those mushrooms that like grow on the side of logs. It looks like a turkey tail mushroom, kind of. Yes. But, but really yes. bright, brightly colored. Yeah. 
And I do not like turkey tail mushrooms. People think it's so cute. Cottage core chicks out here yeah. with their their trees with these little stepping stools for squirrels growing out of the <laughs> side of their logs. And I'm like, ew. Oh, oh that's Gross. me. I think they're so pretty. <laughs> oh no. I love the turkey tail. And you can eat them. Turkey tail mushrooms are edible. I'm sure you I'm sure I wouldn't eat also, them. Also, that I might be part mushrooms. of my my suspicion of them is it feels like <laughs> some of them are like a delicious treat and some of them are i will kill you instantly i'm technically edible but only once you oh. know like uh, uh, and and they look alike here in the pacific northwest mushrooming is a big thing because we have good oh, mushroom sure. environment we have the wet the damp the cool the dark and so the mushrooms here be wild and but but <laughs> Anytime you go to like a hiking place, there's always all these signs that are like, don't eat the mushrooms you find because there's a nice little sweet little brown mushroom that's like, eat me. <laughs> and then there's a sweet little brown mushroom that's like, I'll kill you. So don't the eat hard, mushrooms yeah. you find. <laughs> I, I, I find <laughs> mushrooming to be a, a dangerous, a dangerous game. <laughs> Unless you're really, really good at it. My father-in-law is really good at it. Um, I don't like the taste of mushrooms, so it's not a game I'm ever going to play. Oh, well. <laughs> Wait, maybe we'll get or the you texture. The West after all. <laughs> so. So that's where I see them the most here, is I see mm-hmm. them on trees. Just because they're lifted out of the uh, brush, as it were. As the they're soil. on the tree. Yeah, the, <laughs> yeah, yeah, the soil. You know, where things grow. Uh, do they grow on trees a lot, mushrooms? Or am I just, just where I'm seeing them? Um, mushrooms, yeah, some of them are growing on trees, but a lot of them, most of the time you're going to see it coming right out of the, uh, the leaf litter and the soil. Okay. So the, the mushroom is the, what we call the fruiting body. And, um, but underneath is kind of vast webbing of, uh, hyphae and, uh, and the mycorrhizae. I'm trying, I'm trying not to use a lot of jargon because no one wants to hear that. Um, mycorrhizae. Uh, I yeah, don't know. that sounds like a dance move, <laughs> like pot of beret, pot of beret, Michael Rase. Oh, I like it. I like it. It's <laughs> <laughs> spread your roots in all directions. It's gonna, uh, yeah, and you know what? That's that's good, Amanda. You can kind of think of of that as roots. You can think of hyphae as roots too. And um, have you heard of the um, fungal network? I with, they with mentioned trees? it in Last of Us that they, mm-hmm. and I don't know if it's, I don't think this is in the game at all. But maybe it is. I don't know that the 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 zombified fungus people all can sense one another through this this deep. I also want to call it like a neural network. Of, sure, and it kind of works that way. because the, the, here there's in Oregon there's somewhere I don't know where, but I always see it on the list of like Oregon fun facts is that somewhere there's like a two kilometer maybe it's even five kilometer wide fungal network that's all mm-hmm. one thing they, yeah, they call so, it one big mushroom but i don't think it's technically a mushroom it's probably underground and not actually a mushroom right um, yeah one one fungal colony can stretch for kilometers or miles for our american listeners and they work with trees so they'll start to kind of hook into tree roots and they share nutrients they share chemical signals between each other it's really pretty fascinating. So you've got kind of like the internet of fungus and trees going on underneath the soil. Oh, I didn't realize the trees were part uh, of that. Trees are network. in on it too. Oh, yeah. Oh, I can't trust <laughs> the trees. It's very neat. Um, but cordyceps fungus, the, which is the fungus in The Last of Us, is not, it, it's not part of that. Uh, cordyceps of is, is localized pretty much to the host. Right. So that, so that wouldn't parasitic. work. It's parasitic. So yeah, it's yeah. not one of the one of the little guys popping out of the soil or out of the no, side of a tree. No. It's popping up in your brains. <laughs> or out of your brain, I guess. Out of your brains. Um, uh, so when I see a fairy ring mm-hmm. of which is don't step in mushrooms, it. don't step in it. First of all, yeah, the you only get stuck in that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but the <laughs> ring that's all one organism. Yeah, that's one organism. Yeah. But it's mushroomed bloop, 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 in a little circle there. Mm-hmm. It's kind of crazy, isn't it? It's is, that, cool. is that common that I'm seeing? Because 
I'll see one mushroom over here and then two feet away there's another mushroom. Is it likely that those are actually the same? Uh, depending depending on the species, yeah, they could be this the, from the same network, from the same organism. I see. Hmm. So, suspicious. Suspicious. Yeah. <laughs> it's is, it is pretty <laughs> suspicious. I think it's very cool, though. It's cool. Um, I'll grant you that it's cool. It reminds me strongly of that episode of Avatar where you find out the whole swamp is like one tree, which means it's probably one big mushroom. Though that kind of reminds me of Swamp Thing, right? With yeah, the green and he's connected to the green, uh, which is another idea of like all the intermingling underground is happening. Right, and they're all talking to each other underground with their little feelers. Well, kind of a little bit of an aside uh, through this fungal network and also through through root networks. Trees will often um, send nutrients to their saplings if the saplings are nearby <gasps> and need more. So they're taking that care of their baby. so cute. Yeah. This episode will come out after the plants episode. Uh, but we'll have to have Pet on again because trees ad- fascinate me in how sophisticated they are considering oh, yeah. that we don't think of them as alive, quote unquote. We think of them as alive, but not the way we think of animals as being alive, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. But like truly, conscience. yeah, they're, they don't seem conscious that, yeah, they don't seem to have any form of even a baby's first sentience. And yet they do things <laughs> like send their nutrients children. to their children. <laughs> That's so cute. That is just adorable. Um, yeah. And so they're, they're actually, I think, much more complicated than we, yeah. the, the normal passerby, um, think of. I, I think when discussing things like consciousness and intelligence, yeah. it, it gets a little wibbly wobbly. Yeah, and, and you know. we always said, and there's our a lot of discussion of about that. Smart. Yeah, yeah, in biology. So, but I mean, it's it's very sophisticated, complicated to send mm-hmm. nutrients to something else, and to and to know that it needs the nutrients. Right? Yeah, to recognize that sending this nutrition away from me, the selfish being that wants the nutrients for myself, to send it to another thing mm-hmm. because it needs it, not necessarily in an altruistic way. I don't want to say the trees are being. <laughs> <laughs> but like to recognize that that thing getting the nutrients is what should happen. Right. Because it will, in the end, benefit me or benefit the species or whatever it is. And fungus... Uh, or- fungal colonies do this too so yeah. the uh when hyphae spreads out so the hyphae again you can kind of think of as sort of roots or tendrils and they're right. spreading you talk out about with pen, they kind of live in this no man's land between yeah. animal yeah. and plant so they have some plant features like these not roots they also have some human features or human <laughs> animal like animal features. animal like features yeah. and how they absorb from other things right but they'll they'll spread out searching for nutrients and if one end of of the colony is not getting enough the other end will send nutrients Mm. to that so every hyphae is kind of doing its own thing um and while helping the rest of the colony it's it's i went down a a deep dive with uh (laughs) with fungi Ah. and i kind of wish we could find a a fungal expert because i'd love to talk to someone where this is their 100% 100% their field. Right. This so is their bread and butter. If we have any fungal experts listening to the pod and you want to come on, please email us because I would love to talk to you. <laughs> yeah. So fungus have come up several times and we talked about the ants episode. Mm. They like grow a little mushroom farm, which is somehow <laughs> really cute when an ant's doing it. <laughs> the little, ant, little mushroom farm, little cottage core ants. Uh, but the Cordyceps that I'm familiar with, and I don't know, I think this is the one that's based Last of Us, they talk about this one, is the cordyceps that takes over an ant. It lives in the ant. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no Afio, roots for this guy. It's called Afio Cordyceps Unilateralis. Um, we'll just call it Cordyceps because <laughs> it's oh, easier. Fair um, cordyceps is has kind of become a common term to talk about these fungi. Because there's several of them. So it's not just one. Yeah. Uh, it's one not just season. one type. This is a genre. <laughs> yeah. A genre yeah. of fungus. <laughs> we can yeah, we can call it a genre, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that works. Um, 
but uh i just never so, like to use like genus or kingdom or anything because i always feel like i'm using it wrong well, so well, you can say uh taxon if that makes it's, you uh, that, that a little bit better. <laughs> no <laughs> i'll just use that inappropriately as well <laughs> um so cordyceps um the ant cord it's called the zombie ant fungus we can call it that is that easy yeah, the you zombie know. ant. That's the one I'm aware of. The one you've heard of, and yeah, the one that I think is mostly in the in the game, in the show. Um, so they do not produce uh, mushrooms. So these these zombies running around with like mushroom heads. This is not what cordyceps or a zombie yeah. ant fungus would look like. No, no. And I know they, it was uh, for the show, not for the game. But the root thingies, what'd you call them? Hyphae. <laughs> hyphae coming out the mouth and like <laughs> well, wiggling the around. Just and she like. just she just stood there oh, and no, let it happen there, her what mouth open i i like not okay know. sure just was she being mind controlled at the time i don't know because she oh. but she had the okay, wherewithal so she... to light the lighter though so was she uh, really? Yeah. Okay. That was not clear upon first viewing that she was being affected by the hive mind of the of well, the other fungi guys. And so that's ant, why she just stood there. Okay. That makes a lot more sense. Ants don't infect each other via the mouth with hyphae. That is not. That's yeah. Not how it works. They don't open mouth kiss each other. It's yeah. kind of the uh, the vampire. It's very erotic. Exactly. The, the vampires <laughs> seems to be. I'm going to infect you by being so alluring that you want to come close <laughs> so I can jump you. With I, I don't see that working as a strategy for fungus guys. <laughs> Aren't I so alluring that you want to come closer? No. It was gross. It was gross. I was grossed out. <laughs> so ants, ants become infected with cordyceps because it's found in the soil. So a spore will land on them. And then uh, penetrate their their cuticle or their exoskeleton, and kind of go get from into there. cracks. Yeah, then spread. There's no mouth, no like into the mouth option. Uh, I guess it wouldn't be unheard of, but I I don't know. It doesn't sound right. It's more yeah. that they're they're laying around waiting for you to to en- encounter them in the right. soil rather than going out biting each other. Chomp chomp. And what's kind of cool about about this is the it tells it not tells the ant. It's hard to talk about this in a way that's yeah. not anthropomorphic. Um, so the once infected, the ant decides it's got to climb, and it'll climb God. up to a, a leaf and take its mandibles, its little ant mouth, and clamp onto the underside of a leaf. Now, what this does is get it gets the ant out of the nest, up off the ground where when it's ready to spore, the, the fungus can spread. And also, it's just a better climate for the fungus to not be in the nest. Right. Um, and it'll go up there and grip, and then it'll die. And it takes about like four to ten days for the fungus to kill the ant. And then we have a stroma. So the stroma is... I think what the what the Last of Us was going for with the with like the mushroom head, yeah. But the stroma is more like a little, it's like a, a little thing like a Teletubbies where it's coming out of their head, and it's, <laughs> you know, yeah, more like a single antenna stretching towards the heavens, right? And it'll get wide in one part, and that's called the parath- parathesia pad, uh, where the spores are, and then right. it'll spread that way, but um. The stroma is, you can think of the stroma as the mushroom in that okay. context. Yeah. But it doesn't look like a mushroom. It just looks like a Teletubby. Wow. Teletubby is much more nefarious <laughs> than even I could have predicted. So he gets the dirt with the nastiness, the, the spore from some previous mushroom, not mushroom. <laughs> so he gets infected, she probably, she gets infected with this how and you say it takes what a week to kill it usually is yeah. it infected right away oops you're a zombie now or does it take a few days for it to a couple days as the as the um 
as the fungus spreads throughout the ant's body. Um, what's interesting is the cordyceps does not penetrate the ant's brain. Oh, I kind of assumed the whole infection was happening in the brain. No, but... it, it's happening uh, throughout the ant's body. And it kind of, so it forms sort of a scaffolding around the ant's muscle system. Right, we saw a little bit of that on the show when they performed an autopsy on one of the first patient zeros. Yeah. And they kind of showed, and then uh, I think Ellie cuts into one later, and you can see that it's like, it doesn't have a muscle anymore. Or it has muscle, but it's, right, it's just covered in a layer of this hyphy nastiness. It looks like when you cut into like an old couch. Yeah, 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 kind of. Um, So this is... I think really pretty creepy at least if at least if it was in your brain maybe you don't know what's going on anymore so right you are the amoeba now but, <laughs> yeah uh, so but you might be aware like oh no well because they have that's always kind of a zombie thing too right you've got a little yeah, while still in there you've you've yeah you've got i got bit i'm gonna die you gotta sh you gotta take me out right there's always a little bit of that and uh in spoilers episode two uh is her name tess 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 gets she gets got and it's like only a couple hours before she's got a hearty infection oh yeah so they definitely have sped it up for the show to be like <laughs> you're done so and that's part of the whole ellie can't get infected well, thing is because she's had it for several days if i was like, gonna think think about this as a biologist um so ants ants are ectotherms they get their heat from the environment right so a fungus oh maybe is not going to grow as quickly in an ant but a fungus in us where we're pretty warm and we generate our own heat we're nice and toasty inside. maybe that speeds up the infection oh that's not great news for <sighs> because i gotta say the scariest part of last of us so far is definitely the opening scene when that I mean, just off the heels of a big pandemic and oh, yeah. <laughs> watching the way people reacted to that, <laughs> <laughs> that the guy was like, oh, yeah, it, like we always win against disease. Eventually it goes. But fungus is just going to take us out. Right. And it's only got to get a little bit warmer for the fungus to really, really, really <laughs> stop talking. I am too. I'm already scared. <laughs> for three minutes into this show and I'm feeling anxious, you know. Uh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Our little meaty, little warm flesh bodies being a good place for fungus to grow. Not making me feel great. Well, we, we do get fungal infections all the time. It's not like we're, this is new. For, we don't get cordyceps. So a good thing to re remember is, um, cordyceps does not infect humans. So we can, we can whew, rest, rest easy, at least for that. But you know, if you get athlete's foot, or a yeast infection, or, you know, all kinds of stuff. You have a fungal infection. Um, there are fungal is, infections that enter your lungs. Is like, yeast a fungus? Yes, yeast is a fungus. Uh, <laughs> Medea is know. open mouth silent right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, because it's just one of those things, like, you never, like, you got this seatbelt half over here and this seatbelt half in, over here and you've never clicked them together into a single piece of information. And people always say, oh, the yeast is alive. You got to keep it alive. You got to feed it sugar. Yeah. And my sourdough starter is 84 years old. Um, <laughs> but I guess I never really thought that it was like a straight up a fungus. <laughs> straight up. I don't know what I thought it was other than like a bacterium of some kind. Mm. But I guess... A fungus yeah. makes more sense. You can't eat bread without eating just a little bit of fungus. You need it. Uh, fungus is so important. It makes our it makes our bread. It makes our beer. Um, it makes uh, penicillin. So our antibiotics are fungus. Oh, I guess that's right. Yeah. So they're not all bad. Uh, they're not all right. All right. I, I'm <laughs> coming around on you, fungus. <laughs> I, I know you folks in Portland, Portland love your kombucha, and without fungus, the the you butcha have kombucha. Be Bussin, yes. The um, I, also I don't, don't drink kombucha because like, no, nasty. I don't, but I I do definitely. Being an, on the art side of Portland, there's a lot of a you lot know, of lots uh, of lots of homemade booch going on. 
lot of <laughs> bowls in people's pantries with mm-hmm. mushrooms just floating around on top. And they're like, oh, yeah, that's my my kombucha starter or whatever. I'm like, you're nasty. I got to well, go. <laughs> it's, it's not only fungus. Um, it's a it's a relationship between bacteria and fungus. And it's called the mother. <laughs> or a scoby you can call it a scoby if that's easier no i'm definitely call- I like the borg you know it's like it's yeah. the mother it's the mother the, the mother bucha. <laughs> uh like athlete's foot also you know it's not one of those things you think i guess i just i'm just mushroom biased i think is really what yeah it is. Is, is, and there's no you're not the only one thinking. you're not the um, only one i think most people when they think of fungi they think of mushrooms I mean, psilocybin is a mushroom, and and yeah, we use that yeah. for for recreation, and then now it's also being used to treat um, PTSD and anxiety mm-hmm. and all kinds of stuff. So they're they're good, you know. Sometimes the only time I ever had athlete's foot in my whole life. This is a, a gross aside. Brief. Uh, I is when I was pregnant uh, with my second. I, and then the minute I wasn't pregnant anymore, it was gone. And I think it was literally just an immune system thing. My body was like, we're busy right now growing <laughs> a whole other human. We can't be bothered with this, <laughs> fighting off this fungus on your foot. And it was never like bad. It was just like this one little red spot on my on the arch of my foot that I was like, why is this itchy spot so itchy? And dad's like, yeah, that's athlete's foot. Here's Good some old anti- dad. Fungal. good old knows. dad he always knows about athletes but <laughs> that's what dads are for for walking around barefoot in gyms <laughs> but <laughs> uh, an ant can you imagine an ant got athletes foot it's got six little Aww, six little athletes feet <laughs> six little itchy feet <laughs> uh but anyway back to <laughs> the ant so if i cut into the ant would he she have that network of fuzz yep. underneath yeah uh, she'd be full uh, of hyphy and um, in the show they do like that twitchy thing for a few days first yeah how well, quickly is the ant's behavior being affected um i i it's very it's pretty quick because they're so small so oh yeah that's a good point it's just a probably a few a few hours where that ant has to start climbing and and it's being manipulated um the the manipulation is probably maybe chemical based too. Yeah. I'm not quite sure what's going on chemically in that ant's body. Um, so it's pretty easy to trick, to trick what we're, we're feeling. So if you think about, um, Oh, what's a good example of this? Um, so insects are very, very reliant on humidity, right? They need to be humid so they don't dry out and desiccate. If this is yeah. <laughs> oh, what a word choice! <laughs> Sorry, desiccation. I'm just I'm just walking around and then I start desiccating. <laughs> oh, it reminds me of that Deep Space Nine episode where Odo is kind of falling apart. But um, yes, anyway, it's, it's desert skin. <laughs> we we need if we're an insect, we need constant. We need a particular type of. We need a sorry, dark. We need a particular <laughs> percentage of humidity. What if this fungus is telling the ant's body, it's too dry here. You oh, need yeah. to go find it's a more humid spot. And that's the kind of... Influencing how it how it how it's is experiencing. experiencing yep. Yeah. That's its the kind body. of chemical trickery I think is likely happening. So it's like, you're hot. Go. You're hot. Yep. You're hot. It's kind of like right before you uh, get like hyperthermia. And it, it, yeah, and you it take seems all your counter. Clothes yeah, it seems counterintuitive <laughs> to take your clothes off. Or you're like, it's so hot. I gotta take off all these clothes. Hyperthermia, right. also a fungus. <laughs> Not a fungus. <laughs> no, no. Not a fungus. Oh, okay. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, that's that's a good analogy, Amanda. Thank you. Yeah, it's telling your body it's experiencing something it's not, or it needs something it doesn't, and then so that's it gives why the, it gives it the moves. ants anxiety. <laughs> yes, yes. Welcome to, to my go. world, ants. You have to leaves. You have to go to the leaves right now. <laughs> so. If, it, if the infection is so quick, is it likely, because we've talked before about how uh, the colony-based bugs seem to be very protective of that colony, with good oh, right. reason. Yeah. But like, you're too drunk to come in here, wasp, get out of here, <laughs> you know? Or is it likely that the other ants will notice that this, uh-oh, uh-oh, 
this guy's being weird. You got to go, you know, because you're going to infect the rest of us or does it get away with it usually? No, they they know the other ants figure it out she knows. and they they will carry this infected ant out of the colony pretty oh, far no. away. So sometimes they leave on their own because, again, they really want to attach to that leaf. Right. And then other times they get booted. Just get so it is here. like the I got bit, man. You got to take me out. But they're like, <laughs> I'm sorry, man. You got bit. I, I got to take you out because they're just going to put you outside the colony and you're going to deal yeah. with it. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Oh, ants. <laughs> <laughs> so the ants, once they once they get rid of the infected ant, they may also be infected and they can't risk that. So they will sacrifice themselves in the process. So they'll also the leave colony. the colony. Yep. Oh, oh man, you've ruined it for everybody by getting this this fucking but so they're like there's even the chance that I'm infected too. So I can't go back. I gotta stay out here. Because you don't want well. something like this potentially infecting the entire colony. It's just rapid fire all through the ants. So is it so the ants is the famous one. That's the one that I see all the time is the ant. Right. He gets taken over i keep saying hey but they they get taken over and they climb the tree and the little mushroom teletubbies out of their head (laughs) so the the ants the one that i see but is it only ants or is there other little buggies that are getting the zombie there are other cordyceps so it's not the same okay species of cordyceps that does this but um there's a pretty famous one in asia uh that affects mostly uh, ghost moths so and they're they're caterpillars uh, and people eat them. It is uh, apparently a... Oh, 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 okay, hold on. <laughs> hold on. <laughs> you see this little caterpillar has been taken over by a fungus that for sure is zombifying it. For sure is affecting its behavior. And you're like, I'm going to put it in my mouth. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that, like, no wonder people... Uh, this is how it's going to start okay this is how (laughs) last of us was wrong this is how it starts is someone is like yeah i'll eat that and then turns out it was a brain eating fungus well it it, uh this is also found in the soil and while the caterpillar is is, someone's mouth (laughs) yes and later on into someone's mouth um they infect the caterpillar and then what's kind of neat is the caterpillar is in the soil and it tells that caterpillar, uh, forces that caterpillar to climb up to the soil until it's about two to five centimeters away from the top, head uh, up, and then die. Oh, no. <laughs> it uses his little body as like a little uh, mushroom starter. Basically, yeah. And um, the little, and while it's, while the fungus is taking over that caterpillar's body, uh, over the winter, it'll stick out like a little tiny stroma in the soil, yeah. and then it overwinters like that. And then in the spring, the full stroma will emerge from the soil, and then do the do its spore thing, you know, for reproduction. But people will just go pick them, and then they're used. I think they're used in a form of traditional Chinese medicine, but you can also get them as supplements. And uh-huh. I would not take anything ever without consulting your doctor first of course right this is not a medical advice podcast um but it looks i think derek shared a photo if you want to check it out oh no (laughs) oh no oh no see this looks more like it's look kind of a coral reef effect (laughs) kind of out of this (laughs) like you said these long reaching root like things and then that i mean it's really beautiful really if i didn't know that it was horrifying uh <laughs> is this out of caterpillar this is more like it's out of coming out of a tarantula uh there are some that infect spiders too I oh looked, okay anything that can like get in there mm-hmm. oh no oh no i've tried i've resisted googling for, <laughs> I, I always try to resist any imagery before an episode especially if i'm making a hero but I did not want to Google this one in particular. <laughs> this, how do you think I felt writing up the notes for this? And, oh, it's been a journey for me. Oh, Spe- my especially gosh. with a, a hurty mouth the whole time. <laughs> well, 
The good news is you're not going to be eating these cordyceps and risking infection. <laughs> no, no, I will not be. If, but if the listeners want to do a a search for cordyceps, there's there's a lot to look at. Oh, I clicked Derek's link and it was a mistake. <laughs> oh, oh gosh. Okay, so for the listeners, it is a caterpillar. Imagine a caterpillar, kind of a long, skinnier caterpillar, mm-hmm. very similar to the monarch butterfly in design. And then the little capless mushroom comes right out of its little head there. And it's got to be the same length as the caterpillar. Oh, yeah. Yeah, here. it looks about the same body length as, the, as its body. Oh, my gosh. Look at that. Look at that. I, uh, I don't care for it. I don't, I like... don't care for this either. <laughs> this is this is gnarly. When people are like, nature is, is you know tough it's tough out there this is what they're talking about mushrooms mm-hmm. might take over your body force you to to keep yourself buried and then sprout out of your well, head well what's kind of kind of funny not not funny haha but funny oh <laughs> <laughs> is that there are other um helpful fungal species that work with this one and they speed up the mummification time for the caterpillar which would be 50 days by itself to three to five days so you've well, got fungi working nice together yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh i mean i guess that's maybe that's part of my natural aversion is as a human i'm averse to things i think represent or deal with death things that make me sick bad smells uh mold you know all those things that gross you out because your lizard brain is like danger danger Danger, danger. <laughs> this is gonna get you and maybe that's part of my uh fungus aversion is that if there's fungus it's probably not a great place for me to be breathing first right of all. yeah we think of black mold all, on the walls yeah if there's fungus it probably means something has has died and is decaying which is not great for me if i want to not be the next thing that's dying and <laughs> decaying and especially as an American, I could get into like kind of cultures around death. Uh, Americans mm-hmm. in particular have a kind of a don't ask, don't tell policy about <laughs> death in the general. We don't deal with it well. We don't no, talk we about don't. it. We don't. we don't really have cultures around like good death, basically. We kind of pretend it doesn't happen. Okay, so we talked about ant. So I think mm-hmm. the obvious person to... M- mushroomify <laughs> would fungify. be fungify <laughs> fungify powers go uh is the pavement ant from i think it's episode three three is yeah i think she was her uh let me quickly add some mushrooms one second so we're gonna take a break while amanda does the artwork here and be back in a moment okay so if we add some mushrooms uh to so uh, should, uh, should i look gonna, i'm waiting yes look look now look now i've added know, mushrooms okay. to pavement ant i oh, no. two whole hog on some of these mushrooms <laughs> <laughs> oh she's out of time oh boy i definitely went with like late stage <laughs> she is infected <laughs> so i had it push out of her elbow and her shoulder joint because she had that robot arm so i felt like mm-hmm. that was a natural point the hyphae looks great it's very creepy the hyphae would escape through these cracks in her exoskeleton <laughs> is is that tiny little mushroom on the wheel <laughs> yes that is, is a, that one, is that one, ergo or uh, yes and it's going anthony's fire psychedelic <laughs> it's making her experience things that aren't really there <laughs> Uh, she is going to burn her community in the Salem witch trials. Uh, <laughs> that's one of the theories behind Salem witch trials is that there was yeah, ergo and go all over the the corn. Uh, she has sustained battle damage, and more mushrooms are coming out of where her hand used to be. <laughs> more mushrooms, and then of course the freakiest thing of all is when it comes out the eyes. So oh yeah, some mushrooms in the Last the of Us when it's coming right out of the eyeball, it is. Oh yeah, do a not lot like to look at. That, that's a lot. <laughs> Uh, and then I gave her some of those, uh, those, uh, what'd you call them? I called them stair steps for squirrels. <laughs> Turkey tail mushrooms. Turkey tail mushrooms. Yeah, yeah, come right, right on the side of her arm there. You mostly find those on oak trees if anyone is looking for a turkey tail. Oh, uh, that must be why I see them a lot. It's because we do have a lot of oak trees around here. 
Oh, uh, oh. And the listeners should know that for the field notes page on our website, we will it will not be gross. We're not going to put yucky yeah. get the photos on there for you. <laughs> Safe, oh, it'll be safe to look like at me who yeah. don't want to say it <laughs> it'll have amanda's artwork and i think that's about it we don't want to that's uh, that's gross make enough, anyone frankly. uncomfortable yeah she looks great amanda she's terrifying <laughs> <laughs> i would not want her to come at me like i said i might have gotten too whole hog i might have added too i mean we started by saying uh, we might have uh the last of us combines mushroom types that aren't necessarily cordyceps at all uh, yeah. adjacent in any that's way okay <laughs> So I've also done that. I've done the thing we complained about, but oh well. I just tried to get several different types of mushrooms, and I didn't add a little red one with white dots. I should have. <laughs> oh well, that's well, like there, a classic mushroom. There are like four four groups when you're considering fungi, and um, so the uh, cordyceps is in the Ascomycota, which is yeasts and sac fungi. Cordyceps is a sac fungi, and not. Not related to most uh, most mushrooms, although uh, morals morals are in the same group. I if you like a, you hate morals. morals. <laughs> I people love them though. Like they have such like a neat little net structure. So people are always posting them on like, look at these morals I found. I went mushroom hunting and found them. They're very photogenic. Wow! And I'm like, gross! Get it away from me. <laughs> Like they're like all shriveled and wrinkly, and they got all these holes in them. I, I, I this is also probably deeply connects to my what is it, trip, tryptophobia or whatever. The, the little holes, yeah, with the I, holes. I just don't like it. I don't like it. <laughs> so sorry, mushroom fans. I'm sure there's people out there who are like my poor little mushroom friends, my little fun guys. <laughs> Amanda's so harsh on them. Well, at least we don't, don't have don't. to worry about. Um... You know, we don't want athlete's foot. We don't want I can't get let St. Anthony's of, fire. Of the brain. You know? Yeah, it's not going to happen. Um, well, because we had Ped on. So we talked about this a little bit when Ped was here. I don't know how much of that will make it to episode two of Plants. But he and you agreed that it was unlikely that it would be happening in humans. These these we, behavioral. We haven't things. evolved. Yeah, we haven't evolved with with this mushroom species fungus species for, for a long time it takes it takes millions of years for evolution yeah. to really kick in um and cordyceps is a, a species that in it uh, infects insects insects are a cooler body temperature we're so warm right. we, would, we would just denature the proteins of cordyceps if it tried to infect us okay so we're All just right. too hot too spicy. So, so my fear that it would spread quickly inside of me because I'm nice and toasty warm nah, is actually my warm. what's protecting me. Yeah. Is that I'm nice and spicy hot. If if something like cordyceps evolved, um, and as climate change makes everything a little bit warmer, which could mm -hmm. push a faster evolution, um, we are seeing a lot of um, sort of quick evolution taking place in fungi. Fungi, um, maybe eventually there could be a cordyceps that could tolerate our warm body temperature. But as of right now, no. So what watchdog animal should we be watching? <laughs> um, I don't know. Like, oh, no. I don't want to make any animals the target, so I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> you don't want the cordyceps to hear. The, 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 it's a good idea. I don't want people to start thinking we need to kill animals to protect right. ourselves right. from fungal Fair infection. Enough. Well, um, I don't mean to put them on the on the spot here. But we talked about bats are having a hard time right now because of mm -hmm. white nose syndrome. Poor little baddies. Poor little bat friends. And that's a fungus as that's well, fungus. right? Right. Yep. And it's infecting them. And the thing that really kills them is that it wakes them up before mm -hmm. they're ready to wake up for overwintering. And then they, there's nothing for them to eat, basically. And they, they It's a pretty lousy it. way to go. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty. Crap. Although I think now we're finding bats that are resistant to that fungus. So eventually Different. you know it, it hopefully hopefully will work out that that epidemiologist at the beginning of left to us was wrong and we can <laughs> beat the fungus the white nose won't come for me um well that's good i'm glad that the bats <laughs> maybe stand a chance because we want them to be okay uh so this was kind of a enemy of ants episode <laughs> of the bug <laughs> podcast how many uh, mushroom caps would you give? Oh. How many LSD trips would you give this? 
I, I would I would give this I think four LSD out of six LSD trips. All right. Oh my you? gosh. Uh, I mean, statistically, a pretty good trip. Then yeah. you know, it's four okay. out of six. That's not bad. Uh, I don't like it. I think they could go away. <laughs> <laughs> I know that we talked about how they're helpful to us with bread and literal life saving medicine, and beer and medicine. And, yeah. Well, I don't care about beer. But, and trips. Uh, right i care about i care about penicillin so i guess i gotta give him at least one one That's mushroom it. cap you're just giving the uh, I know. amanda i know you like bread i really like bread <laughs> i know okay. you like bread two two out. i don't mind them when they're small and cute and there is something fascinating i think about like the underness of a of a mushroom cap where it's like all uh venti like that i think oh, those are called the gills yeah. Oh my gosh, the gills! <laughs> I take it back. I don't like it anymore. <laughs> but there is something. As a kid, I used to pick them and kind of peel them apart. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't like the texture. Know. I can't. I couldn't do that. I have it's that ADHD thing yeah. where if a texture grosses me out, I like can't stop. If that makes sense. Oh no. Like, oh yeah. Like I hate the feel of Velcro. So I often find myself, if I encounter Velcro, touching Velcro. And I'm like, why am I doing this? Why? I hate this. Why? Why do I keep doing I don't know what that is. The impulse to like experience a strong emotion. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why I do it, but I do. Um, I always assumed it was an ADHD thing, but maybe it's, maybe I'm I think just, it's some. I think it's something else. I think I, maybe I'm just bad. I'm just broken inside. <laughs> But so there is something kind of fascinating about, about their gills. Right? Yeah. And then you can eat them is always helpful. And that people are being able to use them as, as medicine for like real world. Exactly. Yeah. Well, so, I'd, like, all right. I'd like to tell the listeners, though, if, if they also have strong emotions about fungus and fungi, <laughs> fungus. Uh, please the fungus leave us a, fungus. or about us. Please leave us a positive review in uh, iTunes or wherever you, you get your, your podcasting or email us. Um, yeah. If you want to chat with us about fungi, you can email us or about bugs or about anything. Um, and you can suggest the next bug we cover. We love hearing from listeners. Yeah. Come come hang out with us on our Reddit. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We have a subreddit. We're on Instagram. If you have Amanda additional have, questions about you know, bugs we've already covered, feel free. Yeah. I'm always happy to do a follow up episode at some point if we get enough questions. All right. Well, I hope you don't get infected by uh, terrible fungus. <laughs> <laughs> and uh assuming you're still you in there we'll see you next time bye <laughs> bye bugs need heroes is created by Derek conrad and kelly zimmerman hosted by amanda allen night and kelly zimmerman bugs need heroes is produced and edited by Derek conrad our music is ladybug castle by roll music all character art by amanda allen night got a bug question email us at bugsneedheroes at gmail.com Check us out on BugsNeedHeroes.com for the visual companion to our episodes with the artwork of the bug-related heroes. We also have an Instagram, Twitter, and subreddit under the Bugs Need Heroes name. Thanks for coming by. I went to a party last weekend. I know. You're shocked at my vibration socialization and pugnacious <laughs> amount of socializing but they were like oh my gosh you should start a podcast and i was like well <laughs> if i got news for 15 you? episodes in don't mind if i do <laughs> would you like to learn about bugs <laughs>